Hey folks, how are you? Davey Davis with Far and Wide, another edition. And you know me, I'm always looking around for interesting people. And I happen to be in Southern Pines, North Carolina. And I found another interesting person. And his name is Baxter Clement. Right? Did I say it right? I think you got it right. Baxter Clement. Nice to meet you for the second time. Great, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. And uh, it's, it's funny, now you, we're in uh, Baxter School, which is? Yes, we are. It's, um, it's called the Sand Hills School of Performing Arts. And okay. I guess we're in Southern Pines, North Carolina. Now, how did that come about? How did it come about? Well, yeah, yeah it's a little different from my roots, I guess. I, I grew up down, down here in the South, but... Um, Where? Down, down in this area, actually. You did? But I went, off to, um, I went off to the North Carolina School of the Arts for high school on guitar, and then after that I went off to Vanderbilt on guitar scholarship, and then after that I went to Austria on a guitar scholarship for post-collegiate. Then after that I moved to New York, and I was there on Broadway and punk bands and touring for eight years. And um, I realized I hadn't seen my family in about 15 years. Wow. And so <laughs> I, should prob years. I should probably <laughs> rectify that. And That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. And, and I also want to be able to do something I gave back a bit, because I've had an awesome life, in my opinion. It's been awesome. And wow. gotten to do some cool things. And so I set this up for the kids. And, this and, is um, great. It's really cool. Kids get to get a little dose of uh, rock and roll in this sleepy little town. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. And you were, were, were you like a child prodigy? I mean, uh, I, playing guitar, you must have been... Definitely don't consider myself a child prodigy. My, my parents say stories how, when we, I grew up in Chicago, in a little town, Barrington. You know, I don't know if you heard of it. Anyway, right outside of Chicago. Yeah. But um, they plucked us, they plucked me out of school at like second grade for a musical ability. And no so kidding. I went to special school with a couple of girls, so I don't have very good social skills. <laughs> but, and oh. yeah, so I've always kind of, I haven't had much options as far as what I would end up doing with my life. Yeah. And I just, I, I like the guitar the most. That's your main instrument, but you can it, play. It is uh, my main instrument. You can play a bunch of things? I play a few. I try to is my, well, besides trying to join a gym as a New Year's resolution, I, I always pick a new instrument each year to learn. Wow. So I can keep, keep, keep trying to make my brain work because you know as you get older we start getting stupider. I think. Do we? I don't know. <laughs> At least that's what I feel like. I mean, we start voting. <laughs> we start voting for the wrong people. We stop thinking. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So we lose that juice or something. So oh. I, I try to keep it working somehow. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not going to get political. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always a dangerous thing, isn't I it? I know. I avoid it. <laughs> Music and politics. Good lord. Uh, well, yeah, I've mixed the two too often sometimes, so I'm going to stop for now. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Now you, in here, I mean, folks, I'll show you. I'll pan around, and you'll see this. I mean, there are guitars hanging everywhere, and there's keyboards and all kinds of stuff. And um, how many? I mean, this building looks like. It's got like how many rooms here? Well, the, it's my studio itself is I, I, I own the whole building and I, I rent the front part out to this coffee shop and some other store. And then, um, then well, Flynn Coffee Flynn's Shop. Coffee shop. Yeah, it's right. a great place. Yeah, I, I, you see, the problem is I don't drink coffee. <laughs> oh, that's the funny part. I'm like, I'm the clean living guy that doesn't drink coffee or smoke cigarettes. You like green tea? I, I do like green tea and I love sweetened tea. That's my weakness, is Bojangles sweetened iced tea. Oh, it's my, jangles, huh? That's my Achilles heel. Okay. But um, but yeah. So this this used to be a bowling alley actually, and a no casino, kidding. the whole building. And then, and then when I when I bought it, it was it already been gone through changes, and I just turned this whole back area into a recording studio and three teaching teaching studios, a couple bathrooms, some storage, and I've got plans to renovate. I'm adding another floor because it's going so well, and it's become this little mecca for children in small towns in this area to come. Come and get a little bit of rock on, so man, uh, and a little classical too. I do that as well because I want them to get it. But you know, you get them excited through the rock and roll first. Yeah, um, partly. You, you like to have them. Yeah, you mentioned. Of course, we just met, so yeah. I don't know this guy. Yeah, we don't, I don't. I don't know him. But I, you know, while he I was setting nice. up, you yeah. seem like a nice man. Yeah, you seem like really Thank you. nice too. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you were saying something about the uh, technique. Um, you, you felt like it was good that people played by ear to begin with. Right. 
and and then it's a fine line, huh? I mean, to get too it, carved out in one way or the other. It's definitely a fine line. I mean, I I started off playing solely by ear. My parents used to drop me off at African American churches, and and that's where I learned guitar. I would just be dropped into the pit with the musicians, which were these awesome old. How old? Like, I don't know, when I was just a, a wee little kid, uh, I don't know, oh my I mean, like 10, 15, 10 to 15 in that probably ballpark area. And then I would learn to play, you know, while I was being saved. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I learned to play with like gospel choirs and stuff. So I was really, I'm really into the blues is what I start grew up on. No kidding. And then I, there was this great teacher that I met as, as a kid named Danny Infantino who just sort of showed me classical music and I was like, wow, that's cool too, like Bach and stuff and I got into that and then you know, I realized, the way I, maybe I can actually get into college and high school with this and, and then I kind of went off into that and it kind of got me through life. So I do both as much as possible. Wow. But I love electric guitars <laughs> so, because they're everywhere. Yeah. It's wow. like that's my addiction as well, that and sweet and tea. They're like flowers, these guitars. They just kind of bloom. And, and they never die. No. And you can never have too many. Yeah. Maybe that's like diamonds more. Yeah. They don't cost as much. <laughs> you know what? It, it, you talk about diamonds and gold and all this. and You know, just to have music in this land and to be doing what you're doing and the, and the young people here are so lucky to have you. Oh, no, I feel... I feel like the opposite too, like I'm lucky to have them. I, I had no idea it would be like such a plethora of talent and like these little kids that just were exploding to do something. So like instead of going out there and just, you know, getting in trouble, like they're coming in here every day and spending their evenings here and just like working on music, listening to music and then forming little bands and I've got a bunch of my little eighth grade students performing at this big concert tonight. and making him do some Freddie Mercury because I think he's fabulous. <laughs> he's one of my favorite rock stars ever. Yeah, he was so, pretty amazing. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah. Um, one of the other great ones we lost, but yeah, um, I'm excited. These, now these kids who listen to, you know, Miley Cyrus or some terrible music like that are getting exposed to, you know, proper rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. The real rock stars that pranced around with, you know, crazy tight pants on and headbands. And oh, it was a wonderful era. A wonderful era. I, I, so much creativity, you know. Very much so. I love it. Now, where the you, your uh, young folks are going to do this thing is at the Sunrise Theater, which is yes. right here in Southern Pines. And you actually, you know, because I was asking around about, you know, uh, different musicians and through this fellow named Huey Priest, who I just did a show <laughs> with. He yeah, told me Huey. about you and he said you had done a couple of, like Big River. Yeah, and, uh, Buddy Holly. And well, I mean, something I did in New York for the eight years was I played in Broadway a lot. I was a pit player, so I would just be in the pit and playing like the big shows up there. And what you mean, like, a like big stuff like Rent and Jesus no Christ kidding. Superstar? You were down in the pit. I was in the pit playing guitar. Playing guitar, <laughs> definitely not playing drums or ukulele. <laughs> but yeah, I was wow. playing guitar. No, so like when I when I set this up, you know, I just I met a few of the people in the local scene and they took on to me and I took on to them because everybody's so cool here. Like the musicians are so nice and it's non-competitive and yeah. it's very, you know, I've done a lot of the local productions. We just finished the Buddy Holly story. Um, and you did that I, on yeah, stage. I played Buddy Holly for a few weeks and got to have the hair combed back and the big glasses. Big glasses. It was sold out every night. Yeah. And then we just, it got picked up and they're doing it again in one of the other towns near here called Fayetteville. Yeah. Um, we call it Vietnam because it's, Feels like it's you're a going, military area. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different. And so that's going to be running all the month of May. And then I think in June, there's a, it's all a bunch of bookings. And in July, I think I'm back up in New York for some work. So you, you do, as well as run the school, I mean, you're doing gigs all over the place. I, definitely. I think anybody that's, you know, teaching kids and trying to get them to do this has to keep their hat, you know, open and going. And, and I'm always touring, or I just finished, you know, a tour last year with Richard Lloyd, from the guitars from Television, um, and that's and like the kids love to hear these stories about it, and you know, like working with people from like Debbie Harry to like you know Talking Heads to the Ramones and okay, so and things folks like folks out there are definitely interested. I well, mean, I don't know. Debbie Harry <laughs> now she is She's known as Blondie. Blondie, right? And she had some hits. Uh, yeah, she had a few. <laughs> and you I mean, the guitar player. No, no, not for them. I'm too young. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, when they do, like, 
I've gotten to work with them at shows and such, like up in New York. Like, you know, the CBGBs, like, you know, like birthday parties that, well, CBGBs is closed now. That's a club? It, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got talking. You asked me a CBG, it's the club. It's is where, it like, really? It's where, like, it's where the Ramones, like, you know, were, were born and where television was born and where Blondie was born and, and all of the great, like, the talking heads, all of the great late 70s and 80s rock. Wow. I mean, I wasn't alive or back then, really. I was just born. But, um, I, I was in a band up in New York that, that did okay for a bit, and then these what was guys. What that band? The band I was in was called, it was the Blondes Inc. Blondes I, Inc. INC period. Yeah. And we were number four on the charts, right behind Johnny Cash for a short time. No kidding. Up in New York um, with, a, with a song called Special, and that was, that was a trip because we got to, we got to like, you know, play a lot of shows with bands like the Secret Machines and the Walkmans and Strokes and things like that. And, it was like being five seconds of fame, is what I call it. <laughs> Not even five minutes. It was very yeah. short-lived, but man, it was fun. <laughs> Mercurial. Yeah. How about the, uh, I, you mentioned the Talking Heads and David Byrne, right? Mm -hmm. I've always been kind of a fan of those guys. Yeah, I, they're amazing. They're, people don't realize how good these musicians are, like the guys that, oh. are, that are famous. And, you know, I hear a lot of people, you know, maybe moan about, like, oh, this person got famous because they were lucky. I mean, there's a lot of luck. Right. I mean, we all know that. Oh yeah. I mean, any of my success was I can attribute it all to luck. <laughs> put on, but uh, these guys are top notch. All these players. Like when I've gotten like sit down, like I got to go to the Allman Brothers sessions up in when they recorded their album five years ago up in Jersey, and I didn't realize how good those guys were. I knew they were good. Yeah. But I just you know it's just it's it's mind boggling. Yeah, it's mind boggling. You know, as <laughs> as good as you think you are, there's always someone better, and. And these guys that are on the top are on the top for a reason. I tell all my kids that too. Not my real kids. I don't have any real kids, but all my children that I teach. Yeah. <laughs> my flock. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm preaching. No, no. God, I get excited. Great. I get a little That's bit. That's kind of preaching I like. Hey, passionate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there ought to be more of that in this uh, world, you know. Uh, I think Most we're getting there. Other stuff. Yeah. Well, we're we're getting there. Well, we are because it's you know all the components everywhere like yourself. You know, starting to if we can do more and more of that. But anyways, yeah, that's uh, that, that's amazing. Did you run into Greg the Greg Trooper band or Larry Campbell in New York City? Larry plays with Bob Dylan. Larry no, Campbell. I don't. I don't think so. I, and I another thing, if you if you start saying names, so I'm notoriously bad at remembering names. Yeah. I yeah I've I've forgotten like my best friend's names at moments, and then it comes back to me. It's a one of those things I have yeah. or don't have. So if if it comes to me, I'll say, yeah, if you show me a picture. Say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I lived with that person for five years or something. Or, You've had so many experiences, and I mean. Yeah, but it's, that's part of life to me. Young age. It's just, I mean, not that young. I'm 32 now. so That's young. <laughs> I'm old enough to be your dad. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> I've been around the block a few times. Oh, but, that's great. No, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I've had a, I'm very blessed or whatever you want to call it as yeah. far as I've been at the right place at the right time and it helps to have the right attitude and it appears you do you know? yeah I, I try to it's um it's fun it's a hard it's a hard gig when you started out you know yeah I was poor for quite a few years but it was totally worth it it's yeah. just so much fun and you know and just and the experiences I mean yeah tell, tell me um, some of the stuff you share with the kids you know I mean, some of the stories. Can you think of some of the interesting? Yeah, ones? well, a lot of like the stories I don't share with the kids <laughs> because it's it's tour stories, you know. So, and it's with, I mean, the thing I do share, I do a lot of like, you know, don't do drugs, preaching in a in yeah. a very positive and realistic way. I think saying I'm I'm a total straight arrow, but the guys that I've toured with, some of these like famous rock stars, like from you know the '70s and '60s, were not. Mm. And so I just I just show them pictures of you know them now. And like show them how they don't have teeth and stuff. Yeah. And how they're passed out at the age of sixty on the couch after a show. I'm like, this is, you know, this is crazy. But I mean, there's some fun stories too, like you know, flipping a bus over on tour or something, and and fortunately it wasn't my bus; it was somebody else. Or like people would get, you know, and it, oh, I can't even go. I'm sorry, I gotta edit myself. <laughs> like, oh no, what can I say? Oh yeah. Um, God, ah, what? Is, there's so many stories. I don't know. You'd have to. You'd have to coax me more into figuring out which ones to go with. I forget. Is it, is it pretty neat uh, playing with Debbie Harry? Well, I mean, that was only like for, like you know, one, one show. Did a it, show? Yeah, and it was it's awesome. I mean, she's such a professional, and 
and all those people. And just like, you know, when when I did some of the Ramones birthday party shows, those were those were my favorite up at up in New York at those were at Irving Plaza, I think, and at CBGB's, but just because that way you're around this whole group of like legends, you know, like all the guys like from Debbie, the Talking Heads, and and they're all in this 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 green room. You know, back when back when they were young, they were doing these crazy things, and I went in the green room expecting the same. And then they're all doing yoga, <laughs> you know, and eating vegetarian rolls and stuff. And I was like, wow, this is a little bit, of, it's a letdown, but it's also really good. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the only way they were going to survive. Yeah, I guess so, I, you know. Kept up the same But program. yeah, it's, it's amazing, like those people. I mean, Richard Lloyd is the one that I spent the most time with because we had a, he had his little international tour last year through April and May. And I was, I was lucky enough to get to be his, his side guitarist. And he's one of the most legendary punk rock guitarists ever. And he's, you know, every once in a while when I start thinking I'm pretty good, and you know, like, hey, like All right, I'm okay. Then like you sit down with these guys, you're like, oh, never mind, I was kidding, because <laughs> they can, then they can tear it up. And that's the way it is in the music business. My God, there are people out there that are just mind-boggling. But then, yeah. then you got people who are sort of amateurish, but they can write, you know, tunes from. What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Talking about yourself? No, (laughs) no. But people that I just heard some of your music, and that was that was really good. I was definitely um, I I was thank you. I was surprised. Not folks were pushing them into, or they were just thought they had an interest in. I really got to get them pumped, and so primarily, what I believe they've got to be able to do relatively quickly is play by ear, and. A lot of kids come in here thinking that this is some magic trick that they don't have the talent for or it's not an ability they can do, but it's, I have to explain to them this is just a skill. It's just like, how can you, can you read? Can you read words? And like, um, you, can, you can listen to the radio and pick up a song. You can listen to this concerto and sort of pick out some of the notes. That's what the old classical masters used to do. Some people are better than others naturally, but everyone can learn it. So I, I really break it down. I use the blues a lot in the beginning just to get them listening to music um, in a different way. They listen to it as a, as a singer almost, and they have to be able to mimic those notes um, from the basic pentatonic scale, which is such an, it's an easy five note scale to start with for anybody. And that's the first step in getting them, getting them started. The, the other thing I do is I make them play a chromatic scale, very boring, but I explain to all my kids, it's like playing guitar or playing any musical instrument where that involves your fingers, um, is like it's like working out. It's this is part musical and artistic endeavor. It's the other part's physical and athletic. And um, even though they're really small muscles on our fingers, they're muscles nonetheless. And if you've never used them before in a certain way, you have to start training them, and you have to stretch, do little sit ups and push ups, and get get them ready to go. And that's what the scales are for, just to get you started and get you comfortable with the fretboard. And then I get them playing chords immediately, because um, that's. That's one of the roots of the guitarist, even if you don't take it on to classical or rock and roll lead work. You just want to be able to strum some chords with your friends and, and sing some songs maybe. So I, I make them vocalize while they're switching chords with a certain strum pattern. I'm not going to go into it all now because it's kind of boring probably for non-guitar players or, or musicians that, you, oh, regardless. But um, I have them talking the whole time because I've I've found most teachers that are in this field at all know that through vocal communication themselves, they 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 learn things much faster. It's like when you're reading or studying, if you if you write down what you just read or if you read out loud, sometimes it registers in the brain a lot quicker. And I, I really encourage the kids to do that. So they're they're doing scales at first, chord work, and then blues. That's usually my first lesson with, without fail every time. Even if you've been playing for 30 years, which I have students that have been doing that, have been playing way longer than I've been alive. And I take them down to step one. It's, um, it's not, I'm not going to rebuild them. I just want to give them the tools so that they can go further. Um, excuse me for saying, um, I hate that. So they can go further, further without me. Because I, I feel my job as a teacher is one of a disposable tool almost. I, I need to be there for them for a certain time. But then they're going to have to go on without me. Is there's just there's an end of this relationship. I'll always be a part of their life. I hope, if I've had some positive impact, or negative, <laughs> but um, they have to they have to take what I can give them, 
go off on their own and learn more without me. There's, there's no way one teacher can give you all that you need. It's just not possible. I've had several different teachers, life being probably one of the best ones, but my first guitar teacher I ever had, Danny Fantino, phenomenal guitar teacher. He got me really started. I, I give much props to him. I would, could never say a bad word about him. Then, then I went off to the School of the Arts and stayed with his classical guru, Aaron Shear, and he was, he was the uh, primary pupil of Segovia. If anybody's an old classical guitar junkie, Segovia was a pretty big guy back in the day, in the day being like the 50s and 60s, I think. Um, and then Shear was his like main student, and then they had a rift or whatever. Then Shear was my teacher through high school, and then I went off and studied with one of Shear's um, Aaron Shear students in college at Vanderbilt, and, which is funny. And he was he's probably close to. 60 now himself. Aaron's quite a bit older. And, and then, then from there, you know, I, I studied with another Italian master and, and like I just kept in Austria. It's weird, an Italian master in Austria. I just kept taking different influences. You can't stay with the same guy, even though a lot of teachers will want you to. You got to keep moving a little bit. But then you come back to him. It's like I can learn from, I still learn from these guys that I tour with, you know, and then, and then they learn from me now, me now, which is a really cool thing because. I just remember on tour with Richard Lloyd, like he he doesn't know how to play the blues, which baffles me because he plays the pentatonic scale and the rock and roll so awesome. Um, the rock and roll, that sounds funny. But he plays it so well, but he couldn't play blues at all. He didn't know how to phrase that. And so I would show him that, then he would show me some insane mathematical guitar exercise and 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 it's just this cool give and take, like once this is well, I mean, I'm I'm jumping ahead, but once you get to a certain level and you're playing, you, you you just start, it's a sharing at that point. And like some of my students have even taught me some stuff, these young kids, like eighth grade to 10th grade sometimes, I'll see them doing something I'm like, wow, I never thought of it that way. Thank God I'm not so close-minded, even though I get more so every year it feels like, but I, I'm not close-minded enough to like shut the my receptors to what these kids are showing me because they do some amazing things that they haven't been taught not to do yet and it's it's just awesome to see that happen and so I encourage experimentation with the instrument but also I'm a big technical fan that your techniques gotta be proper so you don't hurt yourself because playing, wow I'm rambling, playing the guitar is it is a physical exercise and it's like the violin and the cello which was cello was my first instrument I guess my first serious one but um it's like all those like if you do it enough each day and you do it incorrectly you're gonna hurt yourself because I used to practice I don't know six to eight hours a day when I was in the conservatory eight hours being the maximum I mean that would inc involve a lot of breaks but um, six to eight hours a day and like when you're doing that over and over like you damage your hands like my teacher Aaron Shear in high school he hadn't played guitar for maybe 20 years to 30 years when I had him as my teacher he, he crippled himself from playing it incorrectly so I'm super big on that Making sure that, you know none of my kids are like just practicing wrong because none of them are, none of them are doing this you know six hours a day right now but they might and you just want to give them the basics to where they don't damage themselves because that stinks. <laughs> um, what else? Give me some more direction here. <laughs> boom 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 boom. I'll play, I'll play some, some classical guitar, but in the entirely improper sitting technique. <laughs> so don't, don't take any lessons from this, and excuse my, my damaged hands. I've been doing lots of rock shows, so they are quite torn to shreds right now.
That's just a little classical-esque music for us. Um, I can play more if we want. Sure. Okay. It's a little bit. This is this is a very simple piece, Lagrima, by um, Terega. And if my hands will put up with it, but it's simple, but it's just it's beautiful. I'll see if I can go through it real quickly. I hear someone coming. Maybe students. <laughs> beautiful um, just simple pieces for any beginner student can learn that after just a few months of serious practice and study then you get into your basics um, like Vila Lobos this is a pretty recognizable one even though my guitar is out of tune I apologize <laughs> That's a beautiful piece. It gets a little bit more difficult, but there's things like this I expose the students to too, so it's not just rock and roll. You have to have a little bit of yin with the yang, maybe. Does that work? I don't know. Um, but I, I, I want you know everything from country to bluegrass, they are different, to, um, to folk, to punk rock, to heavy metal, to blues, to... Um, even to pop. Pop's really important because pop's where most of the capital is. <laughs> so you should be able to play that. So I've, I've played on silly things from the Carnival Cruise Line commercials to the Blues Clues soundtrack. It's just things you do. It's part of, um, part of our, our job. And then I did, the, did the, all the jingle music for the Sony Milo when that came out. And it was these terrible commercials with little thumbs talking to each other. And um, so they asked me to make music for it, and it's just terrible pop music. But it's it's um it's part of what I want my students to understand too that you know as a musician you don't just go and play big rock shows and and have sold out auditoriums. You you have to be a working musician too, and it's important to um make a living at it because you know getting lucky is a really <laughs> hard thing to come by, and you just you, you need to be able to be you know, very well versed in in show tunes to to all the country and everything I just mentioned, just to be able to you know to make a living if this is what you choose to do, which I don't recommend to anybody unless it's the only thing you can do, and because your heart makes you do it. I tell all my students, please study. I check the grades. D just do what you can, because you should be a doctor, a lawyer. Don't be a cowboy or a guitarist. Um, and and yeah, and it's but it's. For me, it's been the best life I could imagine. I've gotten to, you know, see the world, get a great top-notch education, which I should not have gotten otherwise, um, meet beautiful people, meet people that were my idols and heroes and still are, um, make my family proud of me, and, and just make me proud of myself, I don't, which is, you know, one of the more important things, just to, at the end of the day, when I close my eyes, which is usually around 3 a.m. Um, I can I can feel good about myself and you uh, know and say hey all right I'm this is a pretty cool life I'm a lucky guy so I think that, that's kind of my nutshell and mixing all this music together and hopefully it comes up with a nice stew or some Cajun dish those are good too a little spice <laughs> sure hope you've enjoyed this show and. Um, you know, it's it's tough to get fulfillment in life, and uh, you know, some people are are lucky, and some people make their own luck. And I think Baxter, 
you're one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely a lucky guy. <laughs> really appreciate you spending time with us. Thank and, you. Uh, you're a wonderful individual and you've got great energy and thank God, you know, it's happening. You're part of it, making uh, it better. I'm trying, I'm trying. I don't, I don't know as much as I can. I can hear some of my kids gathering outside too. I'm excited. The students are coming in. I know. I get to, I get to work with them. <laughs> I mean, your typical day. I was going to ask you. You um, I usually start up around you know 10 in the morning, and then I, I, I when I'm teaching without touring or anything or without shows, it can go until 10 at night, usually with, wow. with students because it's all private lessons. Sometimes I do father son duos, but it's pretty much all day, and wow. I have like maybe a two hour break usually in the middle of the day, so it's not. But it's not like I go nonstop sometimes, yeah. maybe an hour, but sometimes none. You know, it's like eight hours straight. And it's not boo hoo, you know, everybody goes to work eight hours, but it's, you know, when you're working one on one with the kid and you're trying to give them 100% energy all day, each one of them, it's. And then they give it back to you, of course, like you hopefully. said. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> if not, I kick them out. <laughs> I'm thinking at this point, I want, I want love and energy. Yeah. The whole time. Why not? And the, the kids coming in right now, the, these, these guys are full of it too. They're, they're a trip. I don't know what they're, they always wear cowboy boots and crazy rock and roll clothes. Just I'm curious what they're going to have on today. Thank you, Baxter. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. It's been fun. It has been fun. Thanks a lot. One more time. Take care of yourself. Take care. You too. Have okay. safe travels. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Can be strong, you got willpower that's second to none. There's one weakness you can't control, and I wish it were my kisses if the truth be told. The one temptation you can't resist, I think you like it better than being kissed. Pieces, pieces.
Not that I didn't think it'd be good, but I was just surprised at the, the type of music it was. I was expecting like some crazy, dirty punk Lou Reed type thing, and it was like really nice. So I, this he seems like a punk guy to me. <laughs> when I first met him, I was like, this guy's like a, he's a dirty punk. I'm an old dirty punk. But it was like it was nice like music with like a catch and and good lyrics and and good. Did you play the instruments? Uh, I play guitar, but on that recording I didn't. I did that in Nashville. Okay, I thought those were pretty good players. Yeah, those are good players. <laughs> I was like, no, this is pretty tight stuff, and it sounds phenomenal. I'm like, how did he do this on his garage band set up at, yeah. on his Mac? Or? Yeah. No, that's a real studio, right? Yeah, with, okay. the, on the computers, but... Yeah, well, Pro Tools and such. Yeah, well, he didn't like Pro Tools, but... Yeah, me neither. He had the other system. I forget what he called it, but it wasn't Pro Tools. Yeah. Um, now, do you want to uh, do you want to play some stuff for the folks? What do you want to do? Um, I guess I can play. I have a guitar on, so I can I can play a little bit. I don't really know what to play, but I'll just sort of fiddle around. Now, this is a Strat. It's a Stratocat. You'll you'll find there's a lot of Strats and Fenders around here, and I have a few more that aren't out. But these are, I guess, I have like five Fenders that are my standards. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a Strat Strat lover. This is my baby right here. This is an old um, it's an old sixty uh, sixties. Strat and it's just it plays like butter and you mean it's a real 60s? No, no, it's a custom shop 60s okay. remake. Yeah. It's not a 60s reissue that you just like go down to like you know Joe Bob's music store. It's just I got yeah. I got lucky enough to get this thing. And it, it, yeah, the, the funniest part about it was like I like how they beat it up to make it look like it's really from the 60s. Right. <laughs> and it's totally not. You know, it's like it's just only a couple year old guitar, but it plays beautifully. Yeah, I heard it earlier. God. It's yeah, I just I love the. You're gonna like it, folks. Well, I don't, I don't know if they like it, but. It's nice. You've got guitars, um, Les Pauls hanging here, and God yeah, knows. Yeah, Les some old Gibsons from the 30s. Wow. Um, yeah, I guess well, you know, a bunch of classicals and some mandolins and some banjos and drums and old, it's not a B3 organ, unfortunately, but a bunch of Fender amps. And, uh, and that's what you're playing through. I'm playing through an old Fender Deluxe, Deluxe Reverb right now. It's just because it's the quietest one I normally... Yeah. Play through. I mean, this guy behind me, this 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 vibroverb, so it packs a little bit too much punch. And yeah. these voxes behind you, if anybody's an amp head out there, these voxes are so cool. It's, it's an old Beatles vox set that okay. I found in Asheville, North Carolina, in a vacuum cleaner salesman's garage. Oh my god! And he didn't. He just thought they were speakers, and it's the classic vox that you just look for that are like you know thousands of dollars, and I think they were three hundred dollars for the whole thing. And it's sorry, it's just one of those finds. They do happen still. Good lord! Not on eBay. <laughs> they happen yeah. in real life. You actually have to go out there and meet people. Yeah. It's a strange concept with computers. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm preaching again. That's okay. <laughs> I like your style. Uh, well, listen, I'll go up and I'll, uh, you know, adjust the volume and uh, okay. let her rip.
that a good warm up? I'm gonna turn it down because I'd imagine you want me to sing with it a little bit. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not the Buddy Holly character right now. I have to throw the glasses on mentally. And um, I know my hair is slicked back. I apologize. Um, let me see what I can come up with. <laughs> Well, I love you, girl, and I want you, Peggy Sue. <laughs> that feels funny. <laughs> So when are you going to come play with me? Through. I'm all stove in my heart. 
I knew what was going on. I learned more than I could ever know, baby. You showed me where to go. I can't blame you for the state of this thing. Oh, no, I can't blame you for the state of was a casino. Then upstairs where I, where I live used to be the brothel. So it's um, good for um, stories. <laughs> and that's, about, that's, um, that's about it in a nutshell once again. There's room for, um, you know, when, when, when students are waiting with their parents on their way here, oh, this too is funny, I'll show it, it's a plug. It's from my sister's husband, just had a book come out, he just had this published, The Yummy Tummy Town Parade. I think you can find it at bookstores all over the country now. I'm not sure. If not, just ask for it. Um, it's really funny. So he's a German chef, and it's a bunch of recipes um, that his his family had taught him, and his his brother illustrated it. And what's really cool about his brother, his brother's in a a, a pretty successful band right now. That's on the Warp Tour. I'm um, called Valiant Thor. They're also on Guitar Hero too. For any of you kids out there. Um, so, and he did all the illustrations, so it's pretty funny. It's a pretty trippy rock and roll thing. I mean, you got soccer playing, I don't know what they are. Some weird schnitzels that look kind of like poop. But, um, <laughs> all sorts of things. Yeah, so this Mark O'Connor. Oh, Mark O'Connor. Um, I, when I was at Vanderbilt at undergrad, um, Mark O'Connor, he was, he's the fiddle player that won, like, Musician of the Year for, like, four years in a row. And, um, I got to work with him and Yo-Yo Ma and Edgar Meyer on bass. Yo-Yo Ma's a cellist. Um, and Marco, like, you know, again, I was in college, so I was a little bit cocky, maybe. I thought I was pretty good. Um, and so we're, I'm playing guitar, he's playing fiddle, Yo-Yo's on cello, and Edgar's on the bass. And then, and then like, you know, we take a break, and so we, Mark, Mark just said, hey, can I hold your guitar? And he grabs the guitar, and he just begins to do something that I have no idea how he does, and I still don't to this day. In that moment, I knew <laughs> maybe I wasn't the best guitarist in Nashville. So, <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you guys are always... Hey, turn that light on behind you, Mr. Allen, will you? Without destroying it. I'll try. Nice. Thank you. So this is um, this is the Allens right here. Is that a microphone on there? You got a mic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the Allens, and I'm going to be playing with um, this little guy right here. He's in eighth grade um, tonight. And let's see, this is his, his dad. He's going to say something for us. Hello. That's about all he says. <laughs> he looks at me angrily if I let him do anything besides Eric Clapton. This is the mom over here to the right. You got to get her on. Oh, no. This is, this is that. She loves the camera. And, and they, they continually assault me with their presence. <laughs> and I love Nick's one, of, Nick's one of my better students, but I can't say that in front of him too often because he gets too cocky. Um, but nice shirt. That looks awesome. Yeah, I think um, Nick's going to be doing some Freddie Mercury tonight and some Eric Clapton. A little bit of Buddy Holland, maybe. We'll see. That's Nick. He loves the camera. So uh, hopefully we got a future rock star here. 
his dad's counting on it, I think, for his retirement. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another room. That's not me. That's an artist, some really well-known artist from New York. Let me let me hang that in here because he's retired down here. He's I think he's around 62 now, and he just retired, and we became friends because that's what artists in this town do. Even though I don't consider myself totally an artist because I'm not good enough, but no, I'm trying. One day I'll be an artist. So that's another. You know, I, I don't teach piano myself. I bring down teachers from New York. Um, I bring down because I'm friends with a bunch of guys that sing with the Met, uh, and then um, some teachers from Juilliard that are piano teachers, and they come down here because it's like vacation for them to come to Southern Pines. <laughs> so they come down, and I, I have students for them when they come, and, and they have a great time. They they stay with me. I have because I turn the old upstairs of the building into my loft where I live. So my commute to work is a flight of stairs. So it's a great, great job. <laughs> and so this is the other, this is the visiting teacher's room, the New York teachers. They come in here. And then we got another one over here. My teaching philosophy is, I, I want, first and foremost, any of the kids I work with, they, they have to fall in love with music. It's just, it doesn't work unless that happens. And so like within the first couple lessons, I've got to get them. I've got to get them somehow just excited about it. Even if it's just something they're, 